Good evening. So, hi, my name is Jason Coles. As uh, Sue said, there I'm. Uh, I'm I run Expeditions Dive Charters up in the uh, up in the Clyde um, near Dunoon. And um, and today we're sort of going to talk about all about sort of what we do as an operation, but also looking at what Dunoon um, can offer um, as a sort of a, a base for for the sort of diving that we sort of have around here. Um, First of all, thank you to Sue for, for introducing us there. Um, also, thanks to Bizak for sort of allowing me to waffle on for, for an hour or so about uh, about this. Um, and also, uh, a wee thanks to some of the Bizak clubs who actually um, kind of planted the seed about this sort of presentation. Um, a lot of clubs were contacting us throughout lockdown, obviously looking at new places for them to go and explore, to go and dive, and asked me to put together a wee visual representation. So don't worry, it's not going to be a bullet point presentation all the way, like it's just going to be a nice, chilled out visual representation of kind of what we do and what we've got to offer. And so we'll get ourselves started. So diving in the room. OK, so I did say no bullet points, but this will be the only the only one where we've got bullet points in, so bear with us. So. Just basically to let you know sort of how we're going to run through this. So we're going to introduce ourselves, okay, as we're expeditions, um, and then answer one of the questions that we get asked quite often, which is why the noon and also where is the noon. Um, if you you know talk to divers about you know Saint Mall, Saint Abs, Scapa Flow, you know these they, they thing off the head everybody knows where they are but the noon in itself and also the Clyde to a to, to sort of more extent um not a lot of folks sort of understand where we are so we're just going to sort of run through that and then look into the different areas of Clyde diving so we're going to look at sheltered sites also shore diving as well so this is I've kind of got two hats on with this with this sort of talk tonight I've got one myself running a charter up here um but also, as we sort of look down the list here, looking at our, our scenic diving options, all the wrecks and stuff as well. So we're not not dissing the wrecks at all, but we not a lot of folk know about the scenic diving potential of the Clyde. So we're going to look into that a little bit more as well. The expeditions, the area in which we cover. But the main thing, really, we moved here three years ago, and we really believe that Dunoon has the potential to be a diving destination. It's an incredible part of the world in the southwest of Scotland. And so... Like I said, two hats on, so charter, but also we want more divers to come and visit here more regularly. Bring your clubs, bring your family, your friends, and all that. Okay, we, we do believe this has the potential to be a to be a, a base for some pretty epic diving all year round. Okay, so meet the team. So up in the top left hand uh, corner there, that's myself, Jason, and my partner Claire. So just a little bit of background about myself. So I am uh, currently a BZAC dive leader. Um, I just went through my practical instructor's exam on Saturday there. Uh, uh, so waiting to hear back about the results about that. Uh, hopefully become an open water instructor soon. Um, and uh, I'm a partner, Claire. Uh, she's been diving slightly longer than that, around about 20 years. Uh, she's an advanced instructor as well. Uh, and we're both also involved in a local, uh, new local BZAC club, uh, Danoon Divers as well up here. Um, so we run expeditions. Um, you're seeing in the first sort of screen, uh, you've got a good shot of our rib. We kind of catered up to eight divers um, and run to an enormous amount of sites uh, from this area sort of further afield. Um, and some of the little sort of little things that we do, I'm not going to delve into this sort of too much when we get into the sort of diving elements, but, you know, rib diving is not for everybody. So we always sort of thought that little bits of, Little wee extra treats and stuff, but you know, for the divers. So we do like home baking. We got our famous flapjacks and bits and pieces that we have for the divers. Nice hot drinks and stuff when people are out there as well. Okay, it's all the, it's all the little things that really kind of add up together for a for a kind of nice experience out in the water. Um, we have an air filling station up here in up here in Dunoon. Okay, uh, so we we offer air at the minute. We also offer free cylinder hire and weight hire. Uh, we have had dive groups actually fly to us now as I, I sort of run through these uh, slides the next sort of things are going to be looking at actually where we are in the world and how accessible it is and um, but we have actually had people fly here where we've organized for many buses to pick people up from Glasgow airport and come across the Danoon for a, a long weekend and then you've got cylinder hire and weight hire there 
uh, for free. Or even if you wanted to drive up to us as well, saves the extra um, extra weight in the car as well. On our rib, we've got a nice uh, nice big ladder uh, on board as well. Uh, well modelled here by our, uh, our model diver. Uh, a nice set of twin 12 euros on, uh, on our back there. Um, so it's nice and easy to get in and out with lots of sort of technical kit as well. There's a, an offshore rib, and um, she can handle quite a lot of uh, quite majority of, sort of conditions as well. So, right. So that's us. And just a little point, I'll just uh, be sort of asked to sort of say this because obviously we are into our sort of winter diving uh, period at the minute. And uh, we've been very fortunate actually to receive some funding from Visit Scotland, um, which is called the Days Out Incentive, um, which is essentially trying to get more people through the doors in winter. Um, so our diving uh, charter prices have actually gone down to £30 per person uh, per day per base diver in the Clyde's. Yeah. But that's all I'll say about that, but happy to answer any sort of questions on that sort of later on. And obviously, looking at things you want to expect when you come here, Smiles and good times. That's 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 what we're all about. Okay, we're passionate divers. We love the area. We love the sport. Okay, I think that kind of comes through and kind of what we do. Uh, sometimes the way I kind of waffle on and, and sort of uh, divers away from things, but but yeah, but we we love people to come here and enjoy their time with us. Enjoy the diving. Enjoy the banter. Enjoy the crack. Okay, and you can see there are lots of smiling faces. So I think we're doing okay at the minute. Oh, moving on. Okay, first question, why Danoon? So there's quite a few logistical reasons why we actually chose Danoon over, over several other areas. Um, we actually started expeditions uh, south of the border. Um, we were landlocked in Hertfordshire and our plan was to move around the country um, and provide charters sort of all over the area. Didn't quite work as a business plan, so we, we looked at uh, where we could position ourselves and we'll sort of cover the logistical side of things um, in sort of a few slides time. But I mean, you only have to kind of look at these images just to understand why we chose this area. We're in this rugged area in the southwest of Scotland, stones throw away from civilization, if you want to call it, and just beautiful scenery all around. Okay, Loch Lomond, the Trossers, got beautiful landmarks, light beacons all around. Um, and it's just an absolutely stunning, stunning area. And also is where we get to see some pretty cool things out in the water as well. So as much as you've got the scenic elements sort of out in the hills and all the rest like, um, we get to see some pretty cool stuff where we're out here as well. It's a very, uh, um, it's not a densely populated area as far as uh, vehicle movements that go, but uh, we do have Her Majesty's Naval Base up here at Fars Lane and also the uh, the Royal Naval Armament Depot at Coolport at Loch Long. So we do get to see quite a few submarines uh, kicking around. The, the picture you can see on your screen there was actually taken three weeks ago. Uh, with some divers down a, a steamship called the, the Europa, sitting about 42 metres. And uh, divers were delighted to, uh, to, um, to surface to this bad boy sort of uh, rocking up towards Loch Long there. And we were also... Um, very fortunate to get a nice good close up of the Queen Elizabeth as she uh, made her way back down the Clyde as well. Um, I didn't have any divers in the water at that time. I doubt we'd have been allowed to at that time anyway because she took up a huge majority of the Clyde as she headed up and down. And nice, some sort of tall ships as well, nice wee uh, cruise ships and stuff as well. So lots and lots of things to sort of see when we're out on the water as well. So, where is the noon? Okay. Can't count how many times I've been asked that. So the best thing to do is to show people a map, of course. So there's the noon. Okay. Now on your right hand side, you'll see there's Glasgow. Right. So we're not far from the central belt at all. Very accessible. And actually only, including a 20-minute ferry ride, only an hour's travel from Glasgow itself. And we generally operate. And we'll we'll show more of the kind of logistics side very shortly, but where that little uh, that little vessel is just bounced into screen there. That's generally speaking our our area of operation on a general basis, the south point of the upper Firth of the Clyde. But we do tend to visit areas like Arran, Campbelltown, the Mullacantyre, some incredible diving. If you actually head south from Dunoon, you almost have to go 100 miles. 
uh, to find the next sort of diet charter. So you can imagine the scope um, of what's sort of out there, what's available to us as a charter, but also yourselves. If you're looking at, uh, at sort of expedition diving, it's an incredible place to, to consider. Uh, if you're planning any tri trips with your clubs, there's a lot of, sort of unknown marks out there. And there's always new sites being, uh, being discovered sort of on a daily basis as well. And just another, just another sort of indication as to sort of where we are. So a larger scale map, okay. So we've got Glasgow in the centre there, and we've got Dunoon just off to the left. Once again, I would say just an hour's travel, including the ferry. If we take into account some of the maybe uh, more more formally known um, sort of locations for diving, we've got St Abs over on the uh, over on the east coast, which is oh, sorry, which is about two hours from two hours from Glasgow. And then going up towards Oban as well for folk going up diving the Sound of Mull. It's even further, two and a quarter hours, two hours twenty, and Loch Allen even sort of three and a half hours away. So again, so we are we are the closest charter on the west on the sort of west side to Glasgow by by quite some margin. So diving the Clyde. I, I can't see you all, but I'm just assuming there's going to be a couple of wry smiles on faces out there. Uh, this, uh, this slide is not a mistake. Um, when people think about diving the Clyde and sometimes experience of diving the Clyde, uh, this, is, this is what they think of, what they may have experienced. So people generally take, we tend to get comments brought back to us about me fond memories of diving the Clyde, things like, it's like a night dive in the middle of the day, and oh dear, we must we must be on the Valacha, okay, if it's this dark. But part of the reason for this sort of talk, this sort of presentation, is to kind of enlighten you as to sort of why the conditions can be like that, but also as well to show you that it isn't like that all the time, by no means whatsoever. The rain is the major player here. Um, in a lot of areas throughout the UK, um, you know, well, in all areas across the world, obviously weather has a um, has a bit of a say in, in, the, in the diving conditions around the, sort of the coastlines. On the east coast, if you get an easterly easterly wind, it tends to stir up everything, and, and, and the vis is shot, and the conditions are shot. With here, though, we can deal with the majority of kind of wind conditions, but. Um, not so much of the rain. Okay, we've got a lot of hills around the area, um, and it tends to bring a lot of peat down into the Clyde. Um, and it's rather brune on the surface, okay, which can kind of blot out sort of the ambient light, okay, and sun sort of light sort of above the water level can't penetrate sort of down sort of deeper south. But you know, it, it is Scotland, it's, it's, uh, it does rain. But it is luscious and green. It's luscious and green for, for that reason in particular. But it doesn't obviously rain all the time. The sun does come out. When it does come out, it's a pretty stunning place to be. And I think we've got one of the one of the nicest places that we've located ourselves to here as well. So when it's we've got a nice dry spell, that's an indication of a lot better conditions underneath the waterline. So when you're looking at planning your trips to areas like these. Have a look at the kind of long term forecast. Have a have a see of how how much rainfall there's been. Okay, the drier the conditions, the better it is for us up here. So, having a little look at the logistical reasons to kind of why we chose Dunoon and sort of look into a lot of the sort of sheltered sites that we have here. So, prevailing weather conditions in this sort of area are sort of south or west. To westerly, if you want, and basically, I'm just sorry, just trying to get my highlighter pen here. So we are based right here in the Holy Loch. Now the Holy Loch is a designated naturally sheltered harbour. Uh, the Americans had a naval base in here uh, for about thirty years, um, and that is the exact reason why is because it's a naturally sheltered harbour. So with the weather conditions blowing up from the south southwest here. The sheltered sites that we find in the Holy Loch, untouched, they can be flat calm if it's blowing on 4748 out in the main channel. 
But you've also got a lot more than just the Holy Loch where we're based. You've got the entirety of Loch Striven, which is about 20 miles, 20 miles in length. And there's some incredible shore dives off there, which we'll, which we'll look at in a wee second. You've also got, further to the north, you've got a very popular destination that we've got now, Loch Goyle. And even if you wanted to cut across the Clyde towards the eastern side, where there's actually one of, the, well, the Clyde's only protected shipwreck out there, the Iona paddle steamer. So there's lots and lots of areas that you can factor yourself from when basing yourself out of Danoon. For example, the other locations that we tend to pick up and we get divers that come up with their club ribs, especially during the winter, you've got Inverkip Marina here, and you've also got Largs here. But when the wind blows from this direction, they tend to get blown out um, more often than not. So there's not a lot you can do there. There's then also not a great deal you can actually have as a backup site when you're across that side of the water. What we've got on our side of the water, over on the western side of the new, or sorry, the western side of the Clyde, even, is a massive potential. Okay, and lots and lots of backup sites. You can always find a spot to get wet. So this, the the images that you got on your screen there are a mixture of shore diving and boat diving locations, so anywhere from Loch Goyle, Loch Long, and Loch Striven. And now I am going to try and just quickly share a wee bit of content. So I'm going to kind of come away from the presentation for a second. And hopefully, as you'll see a map in front of you. Can I just, just check, Sue, just to make sure that there's a, a map in front of us? Can you see that there? Yes, yes, we can see the map. Yeah, fantastic. OK, lovely job. Right, so this is actually just a, a map that we created on our website just to show people this is public information. We, we don't want to hide anything at all. As I was saying, we, we want people to come and explore this area for themselves or with us. But we created this little site here so it shows you the nucleus of the sites, sort of what we visit on a regular basis. So we've got ourselves... This little uh, the little purple uh, scuba diver emblem here, that's the Holy Loch. That's where we're based. And all these other sort of the blacks and blues, the blues are shore dives that we've actually put on um, to um, uh, a fin the Finstrokes website since we moved here. But then I'll just screen it a little bit. So all those sites are within half an hour of steam, half an hour, 35 minutes of steam. And you've got over 30 different sites there. A lot of boat dives, a lot of wreck dives, but a lot of scenic dives as well. So from there, you've got lots of potential out on the water for different weather conditions. You can always run to and get a lee shore. And also, just quickly, just before I sort of move on to the, uh, the shore diving element of it, one of the things that we did on this side as well is to showcase actually what else there is over here. So if you're bringing clubs, if you're bringing families, big groups, there's lots of adventuring to be done here. You know, waterfall trails and gorges and, and bits and pieces, lots of hill walking, some incredible sort of uh, historic trails around the area. So we've kind of got them on there anyway, just to show you that being across this side of the water, in any eventuality, if if, if diving tends to get weathered out, there's lots more to sort of keep you uh, keep you keep you content on your uh, on your visit. And then also as well, fin strokes. For those of you that don't know, I'm assuming the majority of you will know, but Finstrokes is an incredible source of data um, for, for, sort of, uh, for inland, inland shore diving. So it shows you where all the, the charters are and lots of the dive centres as well. And on here, you can sort of clearly see this is us just marked down in yellow here. It's not quite in the Holy Loch, but it's pretty much on the noon, which is where we want to be. Um, let's just say, for example, that from this map, you can see sort of an easterly wind is, is, is not great in the Holy Loch. You can always run somewhere, but let's just say, for example, you don't want to and you want to try something different. Within 20 minutes, say, I'd say half an hour, half an hour sort of tops, you've got that on your doorstep. From the Holy Loch, you've got Loch Long, Loch Fine, Loch Striven. And also some areas in the Clyde as well. In that little image that you can see there, there are over 50 known shore dive sites. 
and these are perfect for most any experience. There's always somewhere you can go for shallower sites. The sites where you can go and get incredible wall dives, incredible reef dives. There's even some you can you can roll off the shore and and drop on top of a, a wee wreck now and again as well. Um, so having that there as a backup, or even if you wanted just to come up to the area, explore the beautiful scenery, and knowing that all of that is right there, and you can pretty much dive the majority of those sites at any state of the tide. Um, generally speaking, like Loch Long and Loch Goyle, even though they're tidal lochs, um, you can dive sites there pretty much any time of the day. Loch Fine is a little bit more in the way of current, but you're talking about a, a knot or something at best. There are lots and lots of sites there, very, very pretty sites as well. So that just sort of gives you an indication there as to what there is on that side of the water. And going back to kind of being based over here, and if you look down onto the eastern side of the Clyde, where we're looking at Inverkip and Largs, not a great deal of diving to be had there. And people tend to ship across to the east coast, maybe go to St. Abs or somewhere like that, or Eyemouth. But you're talking a you know two to three hour drive there. But in actual fact, you can just nip in the motor, head up through the hills, and off you go. And you can take your pick of any of them. Super. Okay. So we're going to look a little bit more at sort of the uh, the variety, the kind of the sheltered sites um, that we've also got here. All the sites that you can see in front of you can be dived all day, every day. And the majority of them are actually within three or four minutes of the uh, the Holy Loch Marina. Um, there are a lot of uh, wreck sites in the Holy Loch. Uh, I think we've got about a dozen uh, that can be regularly dived, and they are perfect for training, for backup sites, second dives, um, all within the kind of 20 meter range. The only one out of here which is is slightly deeper, to get my wee highlighter, is, is this one just in here. This is the uh, this is the Avarella wreck, which is a very very beautiful wreck. Quite a few divers have done that while they visit us in sort of 20 to 30 meters in Loch Doyle. But again, you can dive it pretty much any time you want. And even though these areas aren't particularly tidal, but just look at the amount of life that's on them. The, the life here is incredible, as we're just about to discover, and we're starting to discover already. If you look at this, almost in some of these areas here, on the left-hand side here, you can barely see a scrap of metal there. It's just covered in, in sponges and squirts and everything else. Okay? So there's lots and lots to see, not just from a, a wreck perspective, not just the wreckies that enjoy it here, but the marine life is just incredible as well. So, I mean, these sort of sites here, we've got, I just, oh, laser pattern on. So we've got some jetties near the area as well. It's absolutely encrusted with life. Um, you've got some areas in the Clyde that are a bit siltier than others. Some are a bit more sort of sandy bottom, which tends to get a little bit more sort of ambient light. But look back, if you think back to that, that first slide that I showed you there, that black slide, okay, of just sort of uh, the Clyde, nothing to see, we can't see anything, it's all very dark. Well, this first sort of, uh, the first screen here we can show you, it certainly isn't the case at all. Some beautiful, beautiful diving to be had and really good visibility at times as well. And lots and lots to see on these sites. So the scenic dives, right? So when people think about Clyde diving, they think of the Clyde shipwrecks. Um, and I don't blame them one bit. Um, we're very fortunate to have a, a gentleman here who actually wrote the Clyde shipwreck books, uh, Peter Moyer, Ian Crawford. Um, who actually come diving with us and have been very, very kind in part in all their knowledge and all the all the sites around here. But the scenic stuff tends to be overlooked. And if I'm to be honest, when we first came here, we overlooked it as well. You know, we knew about the Clyde shipwrecks. That's what we wanted to go to. But we could not believe the amount of life. So the scenic stuff had overlooked, we overlooked it. And but then all of a sudden, it just kind of took off a couple of exploratory dives that we did in the middle of the screen here this is the gantox light beacon so for those of you who know your your shipwrecks 
the Acker, which is the, the largest wreck that we've got here in the Clyde, the largest diveable uh, recreational depth. This is where it hit um, back in 1956. And sorry, bear with me two seconds. I'm having a bit more trouble myself. Yep. Right, okay. So, so yeah, so in the middle here, we've got the Gantops light beacon, okay, and it is surrounded, it's a beautiful, beautiful, scary, lots of, like, basically just a rocky island, and some of, the, some of the pictures here have been taken from that, and you also tend to get some little inquisitive seals down there as well, which is awesome. We had people diving on here uh, just the other day who, who said that it was very much like diving St. Abs, you know, same kind of rock formations, a lot of the same kind of marine life as well. And when it's nice and bright, because it's a nice shallow site as well, I mean, you'd be you'd be lucky to get to 20 meters out of there. So again, perfect for all sort of levels of experience. Um, and again, you can just sort of see, if you look at the, the legs on the left-hand side there in the middle of the screen and the bottom right-hand side there, that's Inverkit Jetty. It's such an amazing site absolutely festooned in life um, and very very popular and again so pick your depths you know you can get a nice good drift through there as well these two areas are definitely more tidal so it's definitely one you have to watch out for as far as the slack goes but there's always a kind of lee side you can get into there as well um, the rocks on the gantox tend to spread out for about 150 meters to the east and about 100 meters to the west and also north and south as well so there's lots and lots to be seen down there. And we have seen the odd octopus down there as well, which is pretty cool. But I mean, just look at the colours. It's, you know, that's not the impression I got from Clyde diving when I first moved here. And it's been great actually showing people and getting people's reactions that have been visiting for us for the first time. And this is sort of why we want more people to come and visit the area. People are coming away, been blown away by the life, you know, but blown away by the colours. And so that's sort of what I'm wanting to show you here. And just for so you can see, just another one. So all these sites, again, in the Clyde, very, very close to home. Love to see macro photographers have an absolute field day. Uh, and the shorelines, that are, you know, boat accessible. There's no fishing that can be done near these. It's very, very rocky, uh, sort of rocky outcrops. So you don't get any bottom fishing. So all the life has just been... Just been led to just just to blossom, to grow, and you get some big dinner plate size anemones, and just you know bits of bits of sort of structure absolutely covered in the in life. And of course, the old lions may never know and again. Like they are beautiful, but they're uh, yeah yeah we don't like them. And now on to the shipwrecks. Now again, I'll revert back to the the slide, the dark slide, the dive on the Valacha. Well, there it is. I do apologize. The pictures aren't particularly great, I must admit. But these two images here, well, they are the SS Valacha. So if you've not seen it before, take a good look. Okay. Um, we were we were quite blessed last year uh, to have uh, sort of 10 to 12 meters viz on her uh, for about three weeks solid. Um, and it was quite amazing because people hadn't seen it in that condition before. And really got to explore it, um, you know, for a wreck that was sunk in 1895. You know, a lot of the shipwrecks around here um, are, were, you know, sunk pre 1900, um, and the Valach is one of the most popular ones, um, generally due to its cargo, um, the beer, the whiskey, the stout, and, and all the rest, and all the earthen jars on her. Um, she's an incredible wreck, sitting bolt upright in 35 meters of water. Um, you know, and deck structure sort of between 26 to 28 meters, and lots and lots to explore now. And in a very tidal area, and you can see there, even on the, the bow section there, where the divers are up the top there in the sort of black and white picture there, exploring either side on her, she's about just over five meters at the beam, um, and lots and lots of life going straight down that stem there. It's beautiful. And then we've got other ones like the Aka. The Aka's an absolute colossus of wreck. It's 134 metres long, 10 metres wide. And even though she sits in sort of deeper waters, sort of 30 to 40 metres, the superstructure stands about 20 metres proud of the seabed, which often tends to find you get cleaner water 
um, off the Acker. Um, and because it sits across the tide set as well, it, it generates a, a, an abundance of life on it. It's like an artificial reef in itself. Um, it's an absolute beauty. I'm going to show you a little, a little video of that in a wee second when we had it on particularly good conditions. But these sort of these these white images, these little brief sheets. So for any of you that have been out with us before, uh, you'll have seen these, and we have uh, the guys from the uh, Clyde Shipwreck books to thank for them. Um, Peter and, and Ian allowed us to use their sketches to really show you exactly what you should be expecting when you get down on that on that wreck. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we've got the, the Greenock bucket dredger there. Again, another very very pretty wreck um, sitting in twenty five to thirty meters. The general depth of the, the wrecks in the Clyde is on average about 30 to 35 metres on the seabed. But there are some deeper at the SS Gintyre, which you can get down to about sort of 40 to 49 metres. Um, and the likes of, say, the Aka and a few others, and especially those ones in the in the sheltered dive slides that we showed you there, you can get be even sort of shallower than, than 20 metres. And even on the Aka, you can get 16 metres at midships on low water as well, which is fantastic. Um, and just in case you're wondering what this is on the left hand side there, so that's actually part of the engine block on the Aka. Can't see any metal there at all. That just goes, it goes to show you that the Aka is like that from tip to toe, from bow to stern, from port to starboard. Okay, absolutely covered in loads and loads of life. And she's a fun favourite with divers that visit up here. And they're uh, certainly a, a must, a must see when you come to the uh, when you come to the Clyde. So I'm going to show you a little video. Hope it plays. I've not had any problems with it so far, but this essentially is a picture of two divers, two local divers here in Danoon. Um, it's amazing actually how many people in Danoon don't know about this, this wreck. And actually it sunk almost a stone's throw away from the Danoon centre uh, back in 1956. Um, so they just they come down the shop there, which is just uh, um just off the port gunnel, um, a few metres off, and they're just sort of making their way around towards the uh, the port companionway. And this was this was this was one of Claire's first times on the parallels, so it, it, the the video was a bit jittery at times, but she she done all right, she's done all right, and uh, and what decent conditions to go down on on something like the Aka as well. So you can see all along there, if you look at all that kind of feathery goodness, that's all brittle stars, that is. It's absolutely covers everywhere. The companionway does silt up a little bit towards the back. You'll actually see the diver just sort of lose buoyancy a little bit and just pick it up a little bit. And then he regains his composure. Heads to the back. I'm just going to skip it forward a little bit just so we can get out towards the uh, the aft deck. We reckon we probably had about 12 plus metres on this. I'm just coming through and you see one of the uh, one of the masts strewn down onto the uh, on the aft deck there. Ladders heading up to midship as well. And they couldn't believe, they couldn't believe the conditions and just wanted to go there and explore. You see, again, almost no metal, just brittle stars, soft corals, and enemies. So there you are. So we'll leave that at that. That just kind of goes to show you again sort of what the conditions can be like here. And that was that was sort of um, Easter time. And again, we'd had quite a quite a lovely sort of dry spell. Um, really cleaned the water up as well. Doesn't matter whether it springs or neaps like, but the dry conditions really brought out um, the light on these wrecks, which just make them absolutely incredible to explore. And because they're all so well intact lots and lots to go around so full boat of divers no problem at all it doesn't become like like diver soup some of the other things that are pretty awesome about 
diving in the Clydes and sort of diving out of the room in general, okay, is you get to dive stuff that's Clyde built. So there's not a great deal of places around the country where you can dive, say, paddle steamers or Clyde puffers. They're dotted around the place, but certainly a lot more condensed. Um, there's four or five that we can sort of dive uh, to, to directly out of Dunoon here with a few just sort of further down south, kind of paddle steamers, and also a few puffers dotted around the place as well. But they're absolutely beautiful. And the Iona, as we sort of mentioned before, um, it's actually a, a marine protected area around it, you know, marine protected zone. Um, she sunk in 1862. So that's coming up for the math, 160 years next year. Um, and would you believe that her paddle wheels are actually still intact? The starboard one here, more so. The port one has just sort of broken away a little bit more. But, you know, and she's only sitting in, in 28 to 32 metres of water. And it's an incredible sight. We've been, uh, we've been given permission to dive this as well. Uh, we just have to call up um, call up the, uh, the local client port authorities in advance just to let us know that we're going for a wee dip. Um, but very, very beautiful, beautiful wreck um, to dive on for anyone that hasn't done any paddle steamers before. You can come up here and you can dive. You can do a paddle steamer weekend. Um, there's the Iona and there's the Champion, which isn't too far away from the uh, um, the Acker, uh, which sits a little bit deeper, sort of 36 to 42 metres. isn't quite as well intact, but still a pretty cool sight to see. And then your Clyde Puffers as well, um, which none so much intact, just up our way. You have to go a little bit further south, so you have to be looking into your, uh, your sort of expedition sites, which we'll sort of look at very shortly. Experience dives. Now, some of you will probably know um, sort of what you're looking at here. Um, in the bottom right corner here, we've had got a, uh, a side scan sonar um, up Loch Striven, which is just the other side of the noon. Um, if you remember our maps, um, and I believe it was these Cheshire uh, tobacco clubs that did a project, the project Highball. Um, back in 2017, um, and very fortunate we were able to pick up on the uh, the side scan sonar here, and we've been able to take people around to go and dive the site here. So these these high balls, the, the Barnes Wallace high balls, um, sort of used as target practice here in Loch Striven. There was a big uh, French battleship called Le Bay um, sat in Loch Striven, and the, the bombers used to come flying over. Uh, the other butte and drop them on and uh, and see if they could hit their target and it was all for it was all practice for taking out the uh, the tuppets who was who was based up who was uh, sheltering up the Norwegian fjords because Loch Striven in itself actually mimics the uh, the kind of geology of the Norwegian fjords and that's one of the reasons why they chose to uh, to test these highballs here. Now there are probably over I believe over two hundred of these sat around in various depths. Um, Loch Striven can be quite deep in places, I believe sort of just over sort of 80 metres in places. Um, but this trail, which was done, um, which is quite incredible, you have a, an X-Craft side charge sitting here in 30 metres of water. Um, and then you basically head down southwest for about 15 metres and you've got a cluster of these three highballs. And then further west, there's a couple more. And you've got this huge, great big anchor. And you can head north or south, wherever you want to go. Um, you head north, you come to one of the biggest Bruce anchors I've, I've ever seen personally in my life. Um, and it's quite, a, it's quite an incredible experience to see something of that kind of magnitude, that sort of, that sort of historical element. Um, and also, as well as the, the highballs and everything else, they used to... Um, practice with the MTBs and MGBs up here. And an interesting fact, actually, last year we we found out that some of the motor gunboats um, that were built uh, back in World War II were actually built in Sandbank, which is right in our base. It's exactly where we are. Um, and one of the wrecks um, out in the Holy Loch, which we deemed to be uh, just a leisure vessel, was actually a converted MGB. Um, sitting in about 16 metres. So again, a nice, a really incredible thing to kind of go and see there. There's some nice different diving. So it's not, not the main Clyde wrecks, 
but lots of other really cool experiences. The MTB in Loch Shirvan is, is a firm favourite with a lot of divers coming and visiting. Again, it's it's slightly deeper, so we're looking at sort of 38 to 44 metres, but an, in, an incredible piece of machinery um, and lots and lots of other things to see uh, in Loch Shirvan as well, along with a really cool shore dive for anyone that wants to know Brackley Point. If you've never shore dived that, if you have sort of come up this area and done some other areas, try Brackley Point. Incredible wreckage of a, of a motor torpedo boat sitting between five and 20 metres. And there's also a nice bars there as well. So again, perfect for training, perfect for a nice little dip. And I sort of on to expeditions. I'm not going to go too much into this as well. Can't sort of, can't sort of uh, give, you, give you everything in a one light, but we do, we get to visit some incredible places now. And again, you can as well. And two hats. One with a charter, one just wanting you to come and appreciate these areas. Um, we visit incredible places like Elsa Craig, okay, Paddy's Rock. Um, the water clarity out there is insane. Um, there's lots and lots of sites out there. There's over 200 wreck sites marked. Um, there's got to be thousands of different scenic sites, all between Elsa Craig, Arran, which we, we tend to visit sort of on, a, on an annual basis. Um, and actually got some clubs down from Aberdeen um, based on when we had this little presentation and they, they saw what they liked from Aaron. They thought, yeah, let's go. And it was the first time they'd ever visited the area and they could not believe that they hadn't been before. Um, really, really clean, beautiful waters, lovely sandy beaches um, and generally pretty damn good views as well. Like So... We do a lot of that. We can help out with with any kind of logistics as well, and helping people out finding air fills and, and and bits and pieces as they go. One of the places that we are tending to visit more often now than uh, than sort of in, well, in our three years that we've been here uh, is the Mullican Tire. Um, you start really getting almost round into that Atlantic water. You you are still in the Clyde. Um, and to, from Dunoon, um, you know, it's probably a two and a half hour drive, I think, sort of round there. Um, it's if you're on if you're on a boat, you, you you're gonna go there for, for a while anyway. It's certainly not a day trip. Um, it's probably about 70 nautical miles there and then 70 back. Um, but there are ways and means of getting your clubs there, getting your boats there if you want, or if you wanted to come out with us, we're more than happy to come and show you these sites. If you just look at some of the visibility there, um, this was earlier this year. Um, we were very, very blessed um, with some incredible conditions um, on sites that we we hadn't managed to ping before. Um, and we were, we were given 20 plus meters vis in, in several places. I think the pick of the bunch, we talked about paddle steamers, so down in the uh, down in the in the bottom there in the middle. Um, and props to Mr. Peter Moyer of the Clyde Shipwreck Books who was diving this uh, dive. And actually, that little diver just here, that's actually Claire sitting down there on the uh, on her favourite. Um, I think pretty much one of her favourite wrecks of all time. I think to be honest, um, sitting down there in about thirty six metres of water, and just being able to see almost the entirety of, of, the, of the wreck. It was absolutely stunning. You can see all the beautiful fish life and stuff as well there. Very, very different than diving sort of this area, um, but just, just absolutely incredible. And again, just look at the colours. I mean, you know, if that doesn't want to make you go diving there, I don't, I don't know what will, to be honest. Um, but there are sites out there, again, for all experiences. Sander Island, um, down on the, the bottom end, the Moloch and Tyre, um, there's, there's a recorded 150 um, scenic sites there, all within all the different islands um, that we, we got given um, by a chap who runs an airfield station down there. Um, and, it, and you can pick your depth and you, know, and you can go there and you can go and explore it and you can go and enjoy it. Um, yeah, and it's pretty cool. And so just sort of when we're, we're talking about um, really kind of what Danoon sort of lends itself to as far as being that really good base for 
boat diving, shore diving, shelter diving, the scenics, the wrecks, the exploration side of things as well. You know, it is an incredible base. And one thing that we're actually delighted now that's also happening is that unfortunately with the uh, um, with the, the, the Cumbria uh, Water Sports Centre um, having to pack in, where BZAC had been doing you know, a lot of uh, training courses um, up there for a number of years. Um, they've very, um, they very graciously uh, given us a chance to see whether we can make the noon work for them. So, you know, they're coming to, to us now to do noon um, to, to run their courses. Um, we've had uh, an advanced instructor course um, this year, uh, another AI uh, weekend um, in December, and national instructors courses as well booked in for next year and hoping a lot more. So, you know, the kind of the BZAC community is, is slowly seeing what we're hoping for the area, what we're trying to achieve with this area. Um, and so, yeah, making it a proper diving destination. I, I do believe it has the potential there. Um, and I certainly hope that you all do too. And that, that is that. So yeah, that's it for me. So thank you very, very all, um, much all for uh, for listening to me, uh, um, all about my diving from the noon and uh, and everything that we have to offer and what you can achieve by coming and diving here. Um, and I hope it's kind of maybe tingled the senses a little bit, and, and maybe you want to come and visit for the first time, maybe again. Um, so yeah, so I, I certainly hope that's the case. And thank you very much again.